Grandma's Kitchen. There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, Everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Grandma's kitchen. And ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen.
everybody. Did you like that? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn you around. More of that a little bit later. Okay, isn't that a great way to start? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons here in my little old Cape Breton kitchen in Port Hood. So nice to see you all and thank you for joining in just another week, another Sunday, and we're getting ready for Christmas. And uh, of course, uh, along with that is our Christmas baking and today it will be shortbread cookies. And I just have to get a couple of little reminders here. Uh, it was an absolutely crazy week this week. It was just so busy. So many things were happening. And uh, it was our 49th wedding anniversary on Thursday. And uh, then we recorded the uh, little CTV recipe thing, which will be aired tomorrow morning, somewhere between 7 and 9, I guess. So that'll be nice. I'll making ginger cookies. And uh, I, I think a lot of you saw the, how the, the staff of the Credit Union arrived here on the morning before they went to work that day and gave me a little community award. They give this out every month. Isn't that wonderful that the East Coast Credit Union do that in their communities? And it really means a lot. It's humbling. It's just so nice to, uh, to have that come back to you. And it's just very special. I loved that. And uh, so it was just lots, lots of little things that were happening. And of course, the cards. I want to tell you about the cards. We never anticipated your interest in the beautiful cards that Margie has put together. And we only ordered a, 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 sh a short uh, amount of them, little amount of them. And... Uh, I put recipes, either recipe one, two, three, right up to ten on the backs of the cards. And her, the pictures that you voted on, the ten top ones, are the ten cards. And then she has a whole Cape Breton set as well. And we ran out, sold out, the first day on Monday when I was putting it all together. We could not believe, couldn't keep up with the orders. So... Anybody who ordered and actually got an email saying that the, the, uh, the, the, it was being sent out, their package, uh, so the, they'll get that. They, it was all mailed out on Monday, but a new order has been ordered, and we ordered a lot more so to come up with the, what we needed, the supply we needed for the, uh, the, uh, all the orders that had come in. And um, so there... They've arrived as far as Sydney, and they're going to be delivered here tomorrow. We have the envelopes all ready. So anybody who has ordered, who hasn't got any notification, you'll get one tomorrow once they are sent to the post office or those that are going to be picking them up here. Uh, that was an option as well. So that, that would be nice. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That was wonderful. I want to say hello to two very special people today. The very first one... Um, is somebody who needs our support, who needs uh, a lot of uh, prayer and help uh, with uh, someone in the family who was ill. And I want to send out a special hello to Tracy Allen. Tracy, praying for you, girl. Hope that all goes well. And um, the other very special person, our daughter Margie uh, goes with Jeff Gillis Kennedy. And his grandpa... His name is Ivor Gillis, and he turned 100 yesterday. And this man is not just a 100-year-old. This is a man who is part of a golf club, and he walks every day, and he's on FaceTime with his family. He, he's just got longevity, and, you know, he's just very with it, and it's just so nice to, uh, to know that. And I actually talked to his daughter, Bev. And uh, she was telling me all about the plans that they had, but had to cancel because of COVID. So everybody's going by tooting the horn. So happy birthday, Ivor, and uh, 100. I don't know what his secret is for, for uh, good life and good health, but uh, he's got that recipe down pat. Now, getting to the shortbread. I want to, I don't have my blue bowl today. 
I'm using a very special day, a special bowl today that um, was given to me by Colton McDonnell. And uh, you may remember long ago, I showed you his Cape Breton mugs uh, because uh, besides his regular job, he does uh, beautiful pottery. And uh, this was a special delivery. His mom delivered it to me and it's a beautiful bowl that he made just for me. He bakes with me every Sunday and it's taking him through the COVID. <laughs> So I'm going to use it today. I'm going to break it in and uh, we're going to use it just for today. And I will thank you, Colton. Um, it means a lot. I uh, had Colton many, many years ago in step dancing classes. And, and then he was part of a group that I kind of managed, uh, Celtic Crew. So that was really awesome. So that music. Wasn't that just the best thing in the world? And that, of course, you know, is Andrea Beaton. Uh, not only is she a great fiddler and a dancer, and she's also a great baker. And uh, she's got a couple of videos at the beginning of our whole process here. She did a couple of live videos. I know Millionaire Shortbreads. And what was the other one? Uh, Grandma's bread, uh, apple, pudding. apple pudding. Yes, that was great. And she's accompanied on the piano by none other than our favorite piano player other than Mac Moran, uh, <laughs> Betty, uh, or Betty Lou. People call her Betty Lou Beaton, and uh, just a darling. And you'll be hearing more from them after we get our shortbread all decorated and out, and we'll have a few tunes to enjoy this afternoon. Okay, right back at it. Um, we're going to get started with the shortbread, and I'm going to move the camera down to the bowl so that you can see what I am doing. All right. Let's bring you over here and turn you down. Very good. All right. So we're going to start off with one cup of softened butter. And I also, I, I said this already. I know I don't think, I don't <laughs> bake where there's a science where people are using, you know, butter right out of the fridge and cutting it in. I, I, this is easier for me and it works for me, so that's fine. So one cup of softened butter, an egg yolk. So I'm just gonna open that up. Put that right in the bowl. And a teaspoon of vanilla. Right in the cupboard goes. I don't know if that's a teaspoon, but that's what I use. And um, I'm just gonna mix that together. And the reason I did that, uh, I know uh, uh, this recipe actually, I got it years and years and years ago from my sister Minnie. And you can do this too if you want, but I like to do it the old fashioned way just by hand. She would put it all in a bowl together and then just have a beater and beat it all up. Now, the one thing that I didn't really like about that was that the egg yolk, there'd be specks of yellow uh, here and there. And um, I just, I, I found it's easier if you mix it up into the butter first. There's lots of different recipes for shortbread. There was a beautiful recipe on here by Mary Farrell and Andy Ganish. She did um, shortbread. When we just started the, these live uh, videos and FaceTiming them all, Mary did one of the videos and she did shortbread. And I think her recipe is still on there somewhere. And she hers is a cornstarch is in hers. Now this one doesn't have cornstarch, so it's a little bit different. And she likes to make her shortbread a thicker shortbread, small and thick. And I like mine flat, <laughs> flat and, and thin. So it's, it's whatever your preference is. Okay, that's about just as good as you're gonna get it. And into that, it's such an easy recipe. It's actually the same recipe that I use for the um, butter tart base. So, and the recipe is on the website now, and it's also on Facebook, so I managed to get that on there before the show started. 
Okay, now into that you're gonna put two cups of flour and a half a cup of icing sugar and a dash of salt. Oh, darn it, okay. Hope you can hear me right. I didn't put my mic on today. I'll talk loud. I have no problem talking loud. <laughs> so two cups of flour and a half a cup of icing sugar. Okay, and a dash of salt. So all I do is just sprinkle a little in the palm of my hand. It might be an eighth and it might be a sixteenth of a, of a teaspoon, so I'm not sure. So there, I'm just gonna mix that dry ingredients out along the top there. I'm gonna take my spatula out and I'm gonna use my own spoons, these ones right here. <laughs> And we're going to mix that up. Now, if you have an electric beater, by all means, use that. I find it comes together more quickly if you use your hands. I find if you use the beater, it takes a while, but it absolutely comes together uh, after about four minutes or something like that. This comes together much quicker when you use your hands. It's almost ready already. The bowl is good, Colton. I like it. <laughs> okay. So. And that, my friends, is your shortbread cookies. They're so fast. Just like that. Now, I didn't tell you. I had, too, I had too many things to say. Preheat your oven to 350. And I pray to God you washed your hands already. I usually say that at the beginning of the show, but I was so excited today with the fiddling, I totally forgot to say that. Okay, now you can cut this into two round pieces if you like. Uh, I'm just gonna put the whole thing on today. Now I have, as you know, um, for your working surface, I have this, um, what the heck do you call that? Baking mat. A what is it? A baking mat. A baking mat, yes. And you can do a couple of things here and, and have a nice piece of parchment paper to roll uh, your shortbread out. So usually you would flour the surface or you would do it maybe my way, and you're gonna flour instead with icing sugar. You don't want to bite into a floury um, cookie. I don't, and it's Christmas. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of icing sugar on the mat, okay? And I'll just sprinkle a little on the top as well. I'm going to put that on the center. And you're going to put your parchment paper over that. I'm just going to move this leg out of the way. Take you back this way. All right. Put my parchment paper over that. And your rolling pin, you don't need to do anything with your rolling pin other than just roll it out. Now, you roll it out as thick as you want it. I like mine about a quarter inch thick. And just stop every now and again if you think you're getting close and just check. It's still a little too thick. That looks just about perfect. 
You can take the parchment paper off. And you have to have a, a parchment lined cookie sheet prepared and ready, which I do. And your favorite cookie cutter. Now I like to use um, a rectangle uh, cookie cutter. I, I got these on Amazon a couple years ago. And it's got four different squares with a, I like the scalloped edge. I also have round ones that I got at the dollar store, which are just as good if you like round ones, and that's fine. I like to use this one. It's about one inch by two inches rectangle, but you can make them as big as you want or even as small as you want. And uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting them out. You can flour your cutter if you find that it's getting sticky or icing sugar it. Actually, I think I might do that. Hope everybody's doing okay. I know that there's lots of young people that are baking as well that is so wonderful we got a really nice letter this week from a lady and how this baking on sundays with me has brought her and her daughters together uh even more and they they bake every sunday with her and they have great conversation and it's not great to be baking together okay um i'm going to lay that on the cookie sheet let me just show you a little up close if you can see the edge of that. So it's about a quarter of an inch. And they can be as close together. There's no leavening in them. And I'm trying to remember how many of these make. Oh my gosh, I want to say maybe three or four dozen maybe. Am I speaking too low? Sorry, it's too late for me to put my microphone on now because I have to put it on before I go live or else the phone won't recognize it. So I'll try to speak as loud as I can. We'll be chatting with Andrea a little later. Andrea is just one of the liveliest fiddlers that you will get a chance to hear. She's a world traveler, has traveled the world with her fiddle, and uh, she's lived in Montreal for quite a while, bringing music there and partnering with other musicians from there and having fun. If there's anybody out there from Montreal that loves Celtic music. But we'll be talking to Andrea, and it's so nice that she has moved her and her husband and their two children home to Mabu on uh, her grandfather's property, who was Donald Angus Beaton, who was an amazing musician and composer of fiddle music. Donald Angus Beaton actually played at our wedding back in the day. But there's another story about Donald Angus Beaton that I'd like to tell you about, is that I was born, as many of you know, I was born in the winter of 1952, and there was an awful storm, and my parents lived just kind of down the gully from Dahl Angus Beaton, and he drove taxi even back then, and he, he drove them to the hospital that February night, and my uh, siblings um, of my McDonald family, like many of you know, I have two families. <laughs> and um, I was raised at the Beaton's house after our mother died in 1955. But um, my, my sister Bernice and my brother Allegrati 
and Bernie and my, my late brother, Jim Donald, they all said it was all because I got to the hospital with, with Doll Angus beaten. And that's how I'm the one in the family that had any music in me. <laughs> Isn't that a great story, Andrea? I love that. I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, he was a great man. I loved him. Yeah. So, that's a little too thick on this end. There we go. And, do I have the wrong end? Nope. Okay. I'll just cut some more. <laughs> I put too much icing sugar on there. It's very forgiving, this, this dough. Doesn't matter how much you work it. It's not like pie crust or anything like that. Okay, so I need a couple more for here. I'll cook the rest of those later. One, two, three, four, five, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So there's thirty there, and there's at least going to be three dozen. So there we go. We're going to put these in a three fifty oven for twelve minutes, and that's perfect for for baking them at at this thickness. And when they come out, they're going to look like they're almost not cooked. But a good test that for you to do is to pick up, pick up a cookie off the sheet while it's still in the oven. Just pull it out a little bit and look on the bottom, and you'll see a nice toasty brown here and there, and that that'll be your sense that yeah, they're perfect. And then you just cool them on the pan. So when I put them in the oven, I'm going to set the timer for 12 minutes. I'm going to come back and. Um, I'm going to make the frosting, okay? And then we'll have some tunes. All right. Um, maybe I'll just throw these on the cookie sheet. We have had a pretty dandy week this week, weather-wise, and the week coming up is going to be equally as good. So uh, it's a great December. Um, not that I mind the snow that terribly bad, but it's just kind of nice to extend the fall weather a little bit. All right, there's just a little bit more there. I might as well keep on going and do this. We did have an anniversary this week, 49 years, and actually uh, we had decided to, um, a friend of ours that I help out with some tours to Scotland and Ireland, it's Ron McCachran, and um, you can find him on the internet under Sandy Travel Tours. He was introducing a new tour next year to Switzerland, Germany, Austria, and the Czech Republic. And we were going to go to celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary. And well, it's not canceled yet, <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, I won't go without being vaccinated, that's for darn sure, but uh, you never know. But, oh, I was so looking forward to that. And it, Switzerland was on Cecil's bucket list for many years, and his bucket list has been fulfilled quite a bit. And this was going to be the, the uh, icing on the cake. <laughs> that's right. And... Uh, one of his biggest things was seeing George Jones in person, so he did that, and there's a few other things, so it's nice to uh, to fulfill those little dreams that we have. So we'll, we'll hold out hope that that might happen still. And, um, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. We're getting down there, folks. Okay. 
Okay. The rest I'm just going to freeform here. My palm of my hand. And this will be a cookie, this one right here. I'll put that on the pan. That one will be for the cook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now when I make the frosting, I Usually make it in my sink. Anytime I'm making frosting, I put the bowl, whether it's cake batter, frost, sugar, whatever, because I'm a messy cook sometimes. And um, I'm gonna make it here. So hope I don't spray you all with icing sugar. And I did forget one thing that I need to bring into here. So just hold on a second. need to put my egg beaters in here. So these ingredients you can put all in together, pile them all in together. And that would be one quarter cup of butter, softened butter. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Did you guys ever use white vanilla? I have white vanilla that, that I got from, from Watkins as well. I'm just gonna put, I don't know, a teaspoon and a half or something in there. And uh, three and a half tablespoons of milk. Pour that in there. And two and a quarter cups of icing sugar. This is the same frosting that I make for, um, the pork pies that we did last Sunday. So I'm going to put in two and a quarter cups. So I have to be quiet and not get mixed up. So there, it is a half cup measure. Okay, one half. One. One and a half. Two. And a quarter measure, quarter cup. And that's it. Now, just hold on a minute. I'll be with you in a second. All right. Pray this doesn't go all over the place. I'm going to start it off with low. And then put it on high just for 30 seconds. Perfect, and it's done. Now, I know I was telling you all to, um, it's nice to have a plunger style um, cake decorator, just those little ones. The one I have that I've used for many years. I really don't use it very often, really. I use it for maybe cupcakes for birthdays or this time of year. And I'm, actually, I'm gonna go wash my hands first. I'm gonna fill this up and we'll go from there. Okay, so.
Now I have the, a bit of a, it's not a star tip. I don't know what that's called. It's come some kind of a flower tip and just load your, your icing into that. And truth be told, the picture that I put on Facebook that I was making the shortbread, I actually made them and put those decorations on it. I, I just got a bottle of, I used to call them maraschino cherries. I think they're called cocktail cherries now because they have the stem on them. At least in our local store, that's what they're called. And... Um, I just cut them up a little bit and put that in the center just to look right. But if I make shortbread at Christmas, I just put frosting on it. I don't put anything on it like I showed in the picture. But I did that just because I wanted it to look pretty to show you. <laughs> but I'm just going to make them today with regular frosting. But you can garnish it whatever way you like. I mean, people put those silver balls in them. They used to years ago. And um, I never bothered with that. I just like, like it the way it is. Okay. Make sure this is ready. By plunging down, and it is. So I'm going to leave that like that until it's ready for us to... Um, to go ahead and do that. Okay, there's about three minutes left in the cookies. And uh, we're gonna get Andrea to uh, play a few tunes with her mom, Betty. And uh, oh, this darn thing. <laughs> yeah, Darlene mentioned it looks like an easy recipe and it really is. It's. It's such a short and quick recipe. It really is. And they're, they're really nice and uh, just bite size. And they're, they're melt in your mouth, really. They're really, really good. I'll tell you who makes the absolute best shortbread cookies I've ever tasted. And that's Teresa Hennessy and, and, and Troy. Is it Troy that you'd say she's from? And she sells them every Christmas and hers are decorated with frosting and she's got like little green leaves and little red berries on it and they've got like a little wind cellophane window in the box that she presents and 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 sells them that way and they truly are melt in your mouth and uh, she's just an amazing cook and seamstress she actually made uh a, a, what was it a, a, a sports coat for uh What's his name? Hockey, hockey guy. Oh, Don Cherry. Don Cherry oh, right. in Cape Breton Tartan. And he wore it on Hockey Night in Canada a few years ago. And he sent her one of his uh, sports coats that she could use to measure it on. And I was talking to her one day, not long after that happened, and she gave me her cell phone. And she still had on it the recorded message of of him asking her about this Cape Breton tartan, um, uh, making him a Cape Breton tartan sports jacket. And how he found out about it is he is acquainted with uh, John McDermott. And long ago, John McDermott uh, and Natalie and Tracy Dares McNeil, they all, they did a show together a few times and uh, traveled with that, I think. And, uh, John had had visited here. He was actually here one Christmas on Christmas Eve many, many years ago with Natalie. And they just dropped in and he was just having a ball looking under the tree with all the little ones. Our kids were little then. But he used to wear these tartan vests uh, and Don Cherry wanted to know where he got where he got them. And that's how it came to be that Teresa ended up making that jacket so it's just a little bit of trivia for you there <laughs> okay my uh, bell is ringing for 12 minutes let me look at that before we get the music on okay so here is what mine look like i'm going to look up 
it's hot. Of course it is hot. Can you see the bottom? Well, lightly brown, toasty brown on the edges. That's just the way you want them. They're perfect. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. I'll take an edge one. This one's just a little browner. That's all you want. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> all right, we're gonna let them cool. Probably take about 15 minutes, but we're gonna have some entertainment. I'm gonna pop these other ones in for, I'm gonna just, since it's a smaller pan, I'm just gonna try 10 minutes and then I'll check them. And uh, uh, I'm gonna make the tea. And then we're gonna decorate. And then we'll have tea with Andrea and Betty Lou and myself, and we'll have some conversation. Okay, people? So Betty and Andrea, take it away. this okay I got to get this down a little further maybe there please give Andrea Darlene Marshall oh hi Darlene, hi, Darlene. <laughs> well I'll let me tell you a little bit about uh, about Darlene Darlene's mom uh, she lost her mom she was 91 I'm going I'm thinking it was 91 and uh, of course Andrea is very good friends with with uh, a lot of our daughters, <laughs> but uh, Krista, um, Krista is married in Dartmouth and uh, married to Scott Marshall, and Darlene Marshall that just commented uh, is Scott's mom, and Scott's grandma, Darlene's mom, is the one who passed away, and uh, Nanny Nanny J, as she was known, was uh, uh, very very close to all of her family. Uh, and she was a much-loved uh, mom to Darlene, of course. 
And uh, so anyway, uh, when the news came that uh, she had passed away, um, uh, Andrea was out at, in, at a cottage in Port Hood and it was all happening very, very quickly. And Andrea composed uh, Miriam's, waltz. Mi Mi Miriam's waltz. Yeah. Miriam's waltz, waltz. And it was used for the funeral home and it was used, uh, you know, on the online service. It was just, uh, it was a beautiful waltz and turns out that Muriel absolutely loved to waltz with her husband. Aww. That was, that was just something extra special. So the talented Andrea had no idea about that, but what an appropriate tune to compose and uh, it was so much appreciated. But that's just one of the many special things that Andrea does with her music. So I'm just gonna make a little change here, a little mess here. Hi everybody, watching from Boston. Lots of beautiful people and lots of former Cape Bretoners in, in Boston. Let's see if I can get this so that it's that's a dandy rig, isn't it? <laughs> well, yes, it 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 converts to a lot of things, but it's kind of shaky on the top. Ah. Anyway, we'll see if we can get a little closer here. Hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I was trying to find the tune on my phone there while you were talking about it because I can't remember it off the top yeah, of my head, and, yeah. and it's not on there because it's a new phone. Yes, I well, I can't may... even play it for you. <laughs> If I find it, I might have it still on my phone, too, okay. and just in case, just to jog your memory. Yeah. So here we have Betty. There's, hi, Betty. Hi, everybody. Just a beautiful person, and uh, you may know, uh, she has a famous brother, Buddy McMaster, of course, many awards he received, but the biggest one, I think, was the Order of Canada, mm -hmm. and uh, that's pretty darn special. And... Uh, Andrea herself, just a very gifted musician and has traveled so many places, Andrea. So what, tell me a little, give me a little snapshot of where you've traveled with your music because she is a professional oh, mus musician. <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> where have I been? Well, of course, Scotland, because uh, that's our kind of ancestry there, and Ireland, and um done some stuff in the Caribbean, believe it or not, um, Barbados and Cuba and Bermuda, um, and then who Haiti. else? Haiti, yes, I was down there. Oh my gosh. Haiti, Denmark. and then of course a lot of the U.S. There's lots of states I haven't hit yet that someday I hope to, uh, post-vaccine. We'll yes, that's right. <laughs> and Denmark, of course, which is where I met my husband, so that was, mm -hmm. uh, probably one of the most special places for me and he is one special man he i'm is. telling you i love him hi. hans <laughs> i bet hans and vigo are watching oh <laughs> hi hans and vigo and little angus <laughs> yeah um where else the north pole actually get I, out of I here went with the troops well gosh it must be 15 years ago now at Matt least Mingle 12 or four, 13 years ago when that with matt minglewood yeah minglewood yeah. was on that tour yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. To um, it was a place called Alert. In I've heard of it. Yes, north of Canada, and um, I stood on the Arctic Ocean. That was really neat. And I drove a fire truck with the steering wheel in the middle. Maybe I'm not supposed to tell that. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a long time ago. We probably changed changed bosses by yeah. now. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So so she has quite. Uh, quite the history there and uh, she is quite the teacher of of her style not just performing but uh teaching as well many mm. festivals and workshops that yeah. you do right yeah lots of camps yeah for sure so how long did you live in montreal eight years eight years mm -hmm. and you're bilingual i'm bilingual yeah i'm not a confident french speaker but i i get like unless it's super 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 fast or slangy i can get it all so if it's, good yeah you're you're very lucky, and I, you took French in school. I though. did, yeah, uh, my, uh, my from parents. primary on French immersion. Yeah, Good so stuff. I would say at in grade twelve, like we all got bilingual pins at the end of the. We were the first grade to ever have. Oh, really? Yeah, the first class. The first class the first That's French Centennial class. Elementary. Yeah. Were you teaching there at that mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. I was. Yeah, Betty is a retired teacher, and I was climbing the door jams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, just an all-round wonderful 
person besides all of that. So I'm going to turn it over. Uh, Betty Lou is also a great teacher herself. Yes, uh, Ryan, Ryan, cousin Ryan is saying hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, Tracy McGuire, wonderful to meet you both. Donna yeah. Skull is watching. Just uh, there's 652 people wow. tuning in. So that's wow. that's a beautiful thing. 657 actually. So wow. thank you all for doing that. But we're going to hear some more music just now. I'm going to check on that second pan and I'm going to take my cookies off the cookie sheet now to cool just a little bit more. Uh, the recipe, yes, the recipe is already shared on my website, tunesandwoodenspoons.com, and it's also on my Facebook page prior to this live stream feed. It went on there at 1.45 this afternoon. Hi from Nipawa, Manitoba. Um, and there's people here, uh, there's, there's, there's followers there from Barbados as yeah. well, and... Uh, uh, and uh, most every week uh, she's on there, so Amazing. maybe we'll hear about that. How long has Andrea been playing? Well, that's, let's give the short answer to that. Um, I started when I was 10. Kind of took a break in my teens and came back to it at, as a 21-year-old, <laughs> which I am not anymore. <laughs> That's okay. Hundred years? No. Practice makes perfect, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that that second pan I put in just for ten minutes because it was less on the pan, and that sometimes that happens. Um, the second pan will will take less time. You know, if you have two or three cookies left over, I find that they cook faster. But actually, I put that in for ten minutes, and I'm putting it in for the another full two two. Uh, minutes so it'll be perfect and i'm um, just going to check some of the messages that are coming on there andrea joan perry glad to see you all love seeing a bit from uh cape breton and uh i have a fiddle and i need to learn that ah. was bernadette gillis reeb from uh she moved back home to marble harbor oh yeah and uh from winnipeg hi <laughs> so and many do you know Lindsay Beckett from, uh, I missed it. Do you know Lindsay Beckett? She said, she's asking you if you knew her. I don't know if she plays fiddle or something. Wait. I missed that. Is she the one that does the Zelda stuff? I don't know. Mm. I don't know her, but I think if it's the same girl I know of her. Okay. Hi from California. Jim Smith. Jim Smith. Come on, Andrea. Bring, put me on the spot. Uh, Marie <laughs> McLean Giles. Hi from Niagara. Love you and have seen you in concert. Uh -huh. Hello from Mississauga. Oh, Jackie. Jackie McDonald. Hi, friend. My Rochelle uh, Drevko. She's from Port, uh, Coquitlam. And her and her little girl watch every, uh, every Sunday. And her little girl has a little play kitchen. She's like oh, okay. five or six. And she she's mimics speaking. me. You know, wash oh. your hands <laughs> and set your oven <laughs> and make your cookies. She's so sweet. And she sends me pictures all the time. Oh, she's so nice. adorable. Okay, I'll let you take it away, and I'll take these cookies off okay. the cookie sheet. What will we play now, Mom? Um, we'll start in G.
Just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we'll get another tune out of you yet, if you don't mind. We're going to have some tea in a minute. Excuse me, everybody. I've got to get you up on the table again. I want you to plunge that frosting right in here. You got that. <laughs> We're going to be doing that for sure. Okay, now I'm just going to. I wrote that too. I wrote that too. Where else? 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 I'm just going to put the frosting on there. I'm going to turn this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I hope you can see. And uh, you can just use a little spoon and just do a little it yourself, but this is just so darn easy. I'm just uh, going to clean off the edge so that won't be too bad. And I'm just going to put a little flour on every one. Now, these decorators, Pamper Chip, I, I, I got it from Pamper Chip, Pamper Chip about... 15 to 20 years ago, I swear, when Tammy was used to be selling it. And uh, for a while, they didn't have it, but they're now, they're still available. They've brought them back, and they're around $35. Um, and you get multiple tips, of course, with anything like that. If you want to have one, that's, it's just, it's a, it's a nice quality. And, um, I just love it. It's so easy. So there you have it. Weren't, wasn't that easy? And I'm going to put a few on a plate here. And uh, two for each of us. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to make the tea. And I'm I'm going to uh, the tea is already brewing. You know how I like to brew my tea. Hope it didn't brew it too much and ruin it. But um, we're going to uh, ha have another tune, and then I'll have tea already. And today is kind of going to be a Colton McDonnell day, uh, day too, because uh, instead of using my usual china cups and saucers or my china mugs, uh, since I used Colton's uh, bowl today, I'm going to use uh, uh, his mugs as well. And I'll just show them to you. These are some of his beautiful creations. I love them. And they're great for your coffee. And of course, it's got good old Cape Breton Island on it. And uh, I don't know if he has this in, any in stock, but if you're in the Halifax area, that's where he works in Halifax, and of course, he comes home frequently here to Port Hood for, uh, for uh, 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 not right now because we can't, we're not allowed to really go to Halifax or people come here. And uh, he works in the health industry, and uh, so that's kind of tough. But anyway, he is just a, a great crafter besides being a business professional, uh, but it, this is stuff he does for fun as, and also wonderful fiddler, wonderful step dancer. So Colton, if you're out there, I'm counting on you to come here some Sunday and play the fiddle. <laughs> so we're gonna have another tune from Andrea and then I'm gonna have tea ready for them when they finish, okay? All right, now. There. There's a spot in there to move it. There it goes. It's like a B minor. Right before the repeat of the B. One note, one. You don't have to remember. 
Yeah. How does that look? This tune is making its debut, Mary Janet. I'm going <gasps> to try the waltz for you yeah. know. And I never heard it, so. And Mom's never heard it. Oh. Well, you heard it the day I wrote it. Okay. I hummed it for you. It's gone. It's gone. I know, it's a long time ago. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yes, Good practice live, isn't it? <laughs> 20 minutes ago. <laughs> if I played that right but anyway <laughs> it's close enough for it now. was beautiful wasn't it and I know that Darlene is probably in absolute tears Aww. yeah so it was a good first run <laughs> that's right so uh anyway thank you I wanted to say thank you to Andrea and and Betty for okay. that I'm going to serve them tea and uh If you like tea, it's, uh, I love tea, with sweets. <laughs> of course, here you gotta go. Thank you. These are sweet little mugs, aren't they? They are. He's them. I sell them at the market. Yeah. And uh, I'll give you a nice little red napkin. Thank you, my favorite. Oh, thank you. All right. And, yeah, you're gonna be the taste testers. Oh my favorite job in the world. <laughs> There's two for each of us. All right. I'll start <laughs> with one. Start with one. Mm. <laughs> lose them on the floor. Thank you. All right. Oh, Mary Janet, that's great. Mm -hmm. they, they're kind of really delicious. They're just so simple. Mm -hmm. So simple, but so good. I'm going to have my little taste test. Yum, 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 yum. Mmm. <laughs> They're darn good little morsels. They mm -hmm. really are. Marilyn Walls is saying, thank you, ladies. Mm. <laughs> but. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's lots more there. As many as you want. Put that there for you. Thank you. And I'm just going to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I'll get you to play a little reel after I'm finished talking. Mm -hmm. And we'll close off. The show like that Sounds and um, whatever, but I I found something in my Christmas basket that I was going to share with you. 
and I thought it was so cute. It, it had in the baggie a gingerbread uh, man cookie cutter and this little poem was with it. And I remember getting it and I can't remember who was it that gave it to me. But this would be something fun to do. Get, get a nice cookie cutter. I made a plate of cookies. I made a plate of cookies to share with you this year. I thought it was a good way to spread some Christmas cheer. They all looked very tasty. So I thought I'd eat just one. And a little while later, I noticed there were none. <laughs> so here's my Christmas greeting and a cookie cutter too. Now you can make your own cookies and maybe share a few. <laughs> and in it was this little uh, gingerbread man, a cookie cutter. And I can't for the life of me remember who gave that to me, but I thought it was so cute. You could probably do the same thing. So I'm gonna talk to you right now about next week. So next week is going to be a little different because next week we're going to be making those all kinds of chocolate balls so uh, and the week after is when i'm going to make the truffles and the truffles i hope by now you've found your molds and and uh you'll you'll be all ready for that so I am going to attempt to go live twice next weekend. Once on Saturday and once on Sunday. It will be a half an hour on Saturday and then uh, we'll be making three fillings for chocolate balls. And on Sunday, we'll do the dipping because the, the, the inside has to be in the fridge for quite a bit. So first of all, we're gonna, the, for the coconut balls, you're going to need three cups of coconut and you're going to need some melted butter and you're going to need some carnation milk, just a quarter cup of carnation milk. That's the evaporated milk, not the sweetened condensed milk, carnation milk. You're going to need two cups of icing sugar and some vanilla. So on, on Saturday, we'll mix that up. It doesn't take long at all. And you're going to cover it with plastic wrap and you're going to put it in your fridge until the next day. And, um, then we're going to make the peanut butter crispy crunch or crispy rice crispy uh, balls. They're, they're very, very easy. Just peanut butter, softened butter, icing sugar, and rice krispies. Very, very easy. You don't have to make all of these with me. You guys pick which of the three that you want to make. The other one are Oreo cookie. They're kind of like a truffle, but they're, they're, they're a chocolate ball because we do coat them with chocolate. So all you need is a couple of packages of Oreo cookie crumbs and a brick of cream cheese, and then we'll coat them the next day. So I'll come online next Saturday at 2 p.m. and we'll do all of those fillings. And then on Sunday, we will, um, we will coat them all. And uh, like I said, they're, they're very, very easy and you can just choose which one of those or all three of them that you want to make. But know that the following week we are going to make those truffles and they are so easy to make. Um, that I think I will um, come online for a little bit the, the, the day before because the, the, uh, the decadent part, the inside of the truffle, does need to refrigerate for at least four hours. So I think I'll just, and you just leave it overnight uh, on that Saturday night and and then we'll uh, we'll do the the chocolates the truffles the next day with uh, With the molds that maybe you have if you watch that video that I did of all of the things the tools that you need to make them uh, You need a mold which you can get at um, The bulk barn. I know they sell the molds there mine are just hearts and, and like little rectangular squares and they're so easy and you need a little paintbrush to spread the, your your chocolate and of course for for the all of these truffles and these chocolate balls whatever you're going to need a ton of chocolate chips or you can buy the chocolate wafers um they're they're both the size of a of a a nickel um that you buy at the bulk burn you can buy you know the milk chocolate ones or the um or the dark chocolate your choice doesn't matter at all and uh I might be using a little bit of Parawax in my uh, 
chocolate chips when I when I'm putting them together. And now you can choose to not because you might think, oh my God, what are you using Parowex for? But it just gives a little sheen to uh, the chocolate coating and gives a it's it's really and it's edible so it's it's fine and you just need about a quarter cup or a quarter of a bar if you get the hard bar but i get the little the little tiny little granules off of uh, para wax but you don't have to do that so um that's basically uh all uh, there is for this week friends and uh I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who tuned in and thank you to our musicians and I'll get them to take it away so we can uh, uh, call it a day. And uh, know that you matter to me and that I love you and I want you to love everybody and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.